Welcome back. Sometimes when you're using audio software on a PC, you don't always want to use the microphone input, but you want to take something from, let's say, a video or YouTube or whatever, and you find that you can't do it. Uh, of course, the expensive software has got everything built in and you normally can do that. Uh, but the problem remains if you're maybe writing your own software or it's cheaper software and you want to get an input from something that's not in the microphone, how do you actually do it? So to give you an example, I'm going to use my own software, which was the translator program, which appears in a previous video. And if I want it to translate from English to another language, I can select my input language English and my output language, say French, and I would just select um, microphone. Uh, which one? Oh, Bluetooth one. That's the one. I'm not going to run it because I'm already using that microphone for the to record this uh, video. Uh, and then it just uh, start the audio capture and it will translate to text on here. However, if I want it to record from a video, I'll find that there's nothing on there to select because there's no input at all from uh, the PC itself that's a stand in available. So this never used to be a problem. If we go back to, you know, the 1990, late 1990s, as far as I remember, it was quite easy to do it. But they seem to change things on the PCs to stop you doing this. I don't know if it was intentional or for what reason. Maybe it was to stop people from recording copyrighted material. I don't know. In any case, uh, you know, there are very good reasons why you might want to do this since it doesn't involve breaking copyright. That I might want to uh, translate something off a video and to take the input from a video. Uh, which is say YouTube. Now I know that YouTube normally has it's got its own translator, so why would I bother? But some some do not have that as a, as an example, or I might have another source. I don't know. So how do I do, go about it? Well, this is probably one of the best ways to do it. I want to use this uh, software called VB Audio Software, which is I think it's French, but I'm not really entirely sure. Uh, French or Belgium. It's um, vbaudio.com slash cable. And I'm going to do the Windows one. And if you just click on that and you open it, go down to, should be the 64. You can find it either VB cable setup 64.exe. Click on that and it's going to extract it into a directory, wherever. And then so everything's unzipped. It's like it's been zipped up. Then we click on program, which is in my case, a 64 bit version, unless you're on a 32 bit machine. Click on that. Yes, I do want to install it. But of course, it's already installed in my case. So uh, it's asking me, do I want to remove it? But otherwise, you would just go ahead and install that. And that would be, you'd think, the end of the story. Well, it isn't quite. What you've got to do then is you've got to go along to the to the speaker here at the end, down on the taskbar, and you click on that and then select Sound Settings. Now, normally, it would have, it would be defaulting to my audio output, which in my case is my TV, my monitor, which is a TV, and it's a high definition audio drive or dis for display audio. And that would be normally the output. Uh, but that's not going to cut the mustard, really. That's not going to work. What you have to do is take the output as the cable input. Uh, you can select that one as well, but it gives you two. But let's just select this one cable input. And that seems to do the trick then but so then you can go back to your program in this case it's i mean it could be it doesn't have to be my program it could be some other recording program or something you're trying to record something and you can select the in this case i think that one does it 
PB audio virtual input. And then instead of listening to the microphone, it will listen to the what's ever playing on the PC at that particular time. So you've got a video playing on in a, some language, you know, like it could be in uh, Filipino and you wanted to listen to it in French, you can um, listen, you know, you can play it then and it comes out here, the text comes out here. However, you'll find that there's no audio. And the reason there's no audio is because you've redirected it back into the input. So you don't get any audio coming out your speakers anymore. And if you pick your original speakers as the output, then it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> so what do you do? So obviously you've got to pick that as the input, the cable input. Then what you do is you go to the control panel, which is easy to find. Search on the settings for control panel. And go to sound the loudspeaker and then you go to playback not recording but playback Let's, I hope I got this the right way around was it yeah I think it's I think it's playback uh, we'll see in a minute anyway if you get it wrong it's pretty clear to see go to the cable input again don't select your speakers or the beyond TV that's from a real tech that's from the sound card on my computer rather rather than the normal digital output that's my normal digital output and that's the, the sound card which is not connected to anything at the moment so select my virtual cable do properties and let's see now i can see here that's not really what i want because i'll explain in a minute so let's go to recording so go to recording and then cable output so not playback, you go to recording, cable output, and then properties. And then you'll see this thing called listen. You didn't see that when you did the um, the playback. You only see it when you select the recording. So that's, again, you can get confused because you look at it and you think, where the hell is this thing where I'm, I can change things? It's not there. But it is when you select the recording one. So go to listen. Don't go from general. Go to listen. And then I've already selected it. You click listen to this device and then you have to tell it which device you want to play it back through. So I'm going to play it back through my normal TV speakers, which is my Beyond TV, my definition audio drivers, whatever you've got. It could be headphones or anything. And then click OK and apply and it will all work perfectly then. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to demo it because it will interfere with my microphone settings and, and everything. But just to repeat it again, uh, once you've installed the VB Audio software, I recommend you probably uh, should donate to them because they're asking for donations. It's a good piece of software. Select the, the cable input. You'll get no audio output until you go to the uh, control panel, click sound. And then uh, say if you get it wrong, it doesn't matter. Click on recording because because you'll notice it's not there. If you go to playback, select it, and then properties. There's no listening thing in there that I can change. So go to recording. Cable output is what I want, not cable input. Properties and then listen. Then listen to this device and then tell it where to put the output in this case to my drivers and that's it. So then if I do that, uh, I select the cable input, it'll, it'll translate in real time from my, from my videos then rather than the microphone. Uh, and of course this can be used. It's not made for my software. This is a general thing for, you know, when you're recording audio things. And just as a final thing, for my particular case, I wanted to listen to the original in the original language and I wanted to hear the translation in English, which is coming in text here, which is I might just say, oh, well, I'll just uh, listen to the, you know, listen to it in English. It could be another language. Uh, how do I listen to it at the same time as I'm listening to the original? Well, of course, I need another set of outputs. I can't stick it through the same on top of it, I, although I, you, you kind of can do that. But you run into all sorts of problems because the output feeds back into the input 
and you end up with an echo effect. So I wouldn't recommend just using the same speakers. I, I run into that problem. So in my particular software, I enable speech output and then I select uh, an, another set of speakers which I've plugged into the sound card, which is the speakers real tech high definition. So that's not the ones from my TV. That's another set. I physically bought a sound bar and I've I've plugged that in to my um, PC. And then I select the language that I want to play it back in. English. Um, let's see. That's Irish. English, that Irish accent, and then it, it'll play on the second set of speakers, the English translation, um, or in this case, I've got from Filipino to French. So the original Filipino would come out the TV, and the French would come out the other set of speakers at the same time. And of course, this is distracting, so you'd want to turn one down and turn one up, and there's a delay anyway, but it is interesting to hear them both simultaneously since it's a real time translator. But this isn't just for my software. This is, uh, as you see, for in more in general. Of course, the software wasn't uh, written for for this. It was written in general for anything. And the VB Audio people have other uh, more cables. You can get quite involved if you're doing like a real, um, like say, um, a TikTok live or something like that, and you want to play music at the same time as you're got a microphone, you can use these cables and connect them in special ways. Uh, I think it takes a little bit of fiddling around to get that right. Okay, thank you very much then. Bye-bye.